another uh, important feminist topic for critical discourse studies can be new ideologies which have been promoted recently in feminist or post-feminist discourses and uh, uh, and the studies uh, in in the range of uh, feminist critical discourse analysis have always uh, focused on such topic uh, as far as new ide ideologies are concerned uh, they have focused uh, some post-feminist ideologies which surface because of uh, the contemporary media and the commercialization of uh, neoliberal markets. Among them is, is a very popular ideology that, that we roughly call commodity uh, feminism. And this, this has been observed from many, many angles, uh, starting with Goldman's 1992 studies, uh, quite recently as compared to Goldman's study Talbert in 2005 uh, and Lazar in 2006 and 9 have also investigated on these notions. And this commodity feminism actually thrives on, on some popular slogans or discourses about uh, women or feminist discourses in other words. And, and they, they focus on key ideas in, in feminist discourses, for example, freedom, choice and rights. And then they, they transform this feminist politics into some kind of commercial venture or a lifestyle ex accessory for women consumers. And they, therefore, they promote their own agenda, commercial agenda. They make beautiful uh, advertisements. They, they might sell you an irrelevant thing to women, uh, just, just relating it to their, their lifestyle or, or their future options uh, their participation in public life that's why they, uh, they choose slogans such as freedom choice and agency one of these examples can be found in uh, talbert's uh, 2005 study in which uh, it was investigated that the discourse of national rifle association which is an influ influential gun lobby in united states and uh, it deals with and it is run by a, profit, a profitable firearms business. Talbot writes that uh, the NRA, National Rifle Association, they were hardly known for feminist activism, but they used feminist discourse to make their own commercial campaigns. In a campaign called Refuse to be a Victim, uh, they, uh, they drew upon feminist slogans of the 1970s and advocated an ad ad attitudinal change uh, among women uh, in which they refuse to be victim and they, they take arms to protect them. Together with uh, this were threaded other women oriented discourses also for example discourses of reproductive rights, women's reproductive rights and the honor of personal safety advisory text to, to to protect women, to give rights to women. And overall, NRA's discourses, National Rifle Association discourses, constructed gun ownership as, as a personal right, personal matter, which, which is equally applicable, available for women also. And then women's ultimate self-empowerment was associated with, with uh, themselves buying guns and firearms for their protection or for the protection of their rights and safety. Uh, this is how, how certain discourse generated over time that women who were traditionally assumed to be not related to buying any kind of uh, arms or, or fire object, but they were convinced that this is related to their ultimate safety, empowerment, protection of their rights, and, and therefore uh, they were convinced to buy uh, firearms. In promoting an unrestricted circulation of uh, firearms as empowering, Talbot argues that NR preyed on women's uh, legitimate fears in order to recruit new female membership, new buyers in other words. Uh, therefore, in, in, a, in, a, in some other studies conducted by Lazar in Singapore, were especially the one which was conducted in 2006 and 9, uh, we found similar findings and it was found that the constitution of neoliberal feminist discourse 
which addressed women consumers as empowered and entitled subjects. And once again, women empowerment was preyed on to, to gain certain commercial advantages. Post-feminist discursive themes such as empowerment, confidence and agency were employed to uh, make beautiful commercials, appealing commercials and to sell various commodities. This is what we call commodity feminism. Uh, through a commodity consumption, a focus on self-indulgent indulgent players, uh, reclamation of traditional roles or stereotypes, and a move specifically towards the girlification of women uh, of all ages was something which was the focus uh, of these advertisements. Uh, Lazar found that these new modern sub subjectivities occupied a discursive space of ambivalence and this amb ambivalence was deliberately created to seek some uh, targeted commercial gain. At the same time, they appeared to celebrate the feminine, such commodification of feminist politics on, on the face of them. Apparently, they appear to celebrate fa feminism, uh, but from uh, if you look at them from a deep perspective, they seem to reject it. Rather, uh, they only reinstall uh, the updated versions of uh, some normative gender ideologies which were already there. Because women, when they are there, they're shown to, to, to seek something, uh, it is enforced that they are weak or they are not getting something so far. So it, it's some kind of reproduction of the same thought. Uh, for all its appearance to be pro-women, new liberal post-feminist subjectivities, according to Lazar, offer limited and problematic versions of feminism and uh, gender equality to a class of privileged women. So, such commercialization of feminist politics, feminist discourses, uh, only produce some better commercial gains for some, uh, some, some kind of industry and some influential elite privileged women who could afford all that. But most of women remain deprived of its benefits. So, this, according to the researches so far, this seemed to be a kind of, uh, uh, a kind of deception for most of the women because this aimed at getting more commercial gains than liberating women overall.